Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about AMH and what to do if the AMH level is too low. So we get a lot of patients with low AMH level these days and most of the times they are panic stricken and they ask for desperate solutions as to how they can increase their AMH levels and what they need to do, what they should eat and how they can increase their AMH levels. So a female is born with fixed number of eggs in her ovary and once a female child is born, she has roughly 1 to 2 million eggs in her ovaries. And these eggs keep on degenerating with the passage of time. As the age advances, the number of eggs keeps reducing. And once the reproductive age group starts, every month some 15 to 20 eggs will come out. And out of that one will grow, others will degenerate. And this is how a female uses these eggs once the period starts from 15 to roughly 45 years of age. So if the number of eggs that a lady is born with is lower at the time of birth or if she has used these eggs at a very fast pace then the AMH level sometimes we see can come out to be low. So AMH test is a blood test and it can be done any time of the period cycle. Earlier long time back we used to do on day two of periods but now it can be done as it is not dependent on the cycle or day of cycle. So once this test is done and the report is there we have to see whether it is in uh, which standard uh, measure. Uh, some of the reports come in nanogram per ml and some in picomole per liter. So the nanogram per ml report is most commonly given in India and in other some European countries uh, it comes in picomole. And uh, if we look at the picomole value, we have to divide it by 7 to find out our value, the Indian value. So in our uh, country, the normal range is 2 to 3.5 nanogram per ml. And patients who have the value of AMH lower than 2, that is 1.5, 1.3, 0.3, these kind of values are low values. And uh, some of the patients with polycystic ovarian disease have a higher value like uh, 5, 8, like that nanogram per ml. And higher value means that there are more number of eggs in the ovaries like in PCOD patients. So very high is also not good and very low is also not good. In between range is uh, good. So in patients who have a high value, we tell them that you might be having polycystic ovarian disease and that's another topic of another video which we will be discussing in another video as to how to uh, deal with polycystic ovarian patients. Today we will stick our topic to if the AMH is low, what needs to be done and what one can do to help oneself. So the first and most important thing is since the number of eggs in the ovary is not going to increase and we are born with fixed number of eggs, it is very important for us to guide our female children in their reproductive age group as to to set a limit to for their age of marriage. If they get married very late, they are going to lose their window of opportunity of getting pregnant. So ideal age to marry is 24 or to 26 years. Of course, one has to make a balance with one's career and there are so many problems these days that are coming up. Children, as they grow up, we make them very competitive and pregnancy is not their top priority or you know marriage is not their top priority. But we really need to make them understand the value of uh, their ovarian reserves. And people who marry off their children at a younger age don't uh, face these kind of problems. So the uh, first thing is the right age of marriage and the right age of having the first child is the most important thing to prevent falling AMH levels and the problems associated with it. So if a lady who is uh, having a low AMH level the most important thing that we see as an IVF consultant is uh, there are other things that we need to see is whether the test which has been done is from a standard lab. Some lab reports are not standardized. If the report has been done from a standardized lab, then we look at the age. So there are other things also that are related to low AMH. So if the age of the lady is young, then a low AMH also does not bother us that much. So we feel that the quality of eggs will be still good. And if the age is on a higher side, then a low AMH level all bothers us more. So if the age is like 35 years and AMH is low, then we're really worried about the oocyte quality. And then scan, which is done on second day of periods, wherein we look at the number of eggs in the ovaries is also important. It's also called as the antral follicle count. So antral follicle count, AMH and age. These are the three things that help us prognosticate an IVF cycle or help us prognosticate the patient's course of uh, the outcome. So any patient who has a low AMH level should uh, visit an IVF consultant and should get a detailed counseling as to what are the chances of pregnancy if they do IVF, 
whether they should panic or whether they should hurry up uh, and do an IVF earlier. What are the chances of pregnancy? What might be the quality of eggs? What might be the quality of embryos? So these are the things that need to be discussed. So then we get a lot of patients who say the doctor give me some medication to increase my AMH level. So one has to understand, like for example, if we have, you know, graying of our hair, our hairs become gray with passage of time or with aging, there is nothing that we can eat to make our hair black again. So that is a process of aging and our eggs are also aging, they're degenerating. So we cannot eat anything or eat any diet to increase our, you know, but there are some preventive measures. So the prevention is that uh, this AMH is uh, falling like an epidemic. So we are seeing a lot of patients with low AMH level and most of the times, you know, we tell our patients that if the AMH has fallen now, you cannot do anything about it. Uh, you know, you have to deal with it. Either you have to do an IVF cycle or if the egg quality is not good, you might have to go ahead and use a donor. But there are some preventive measures that we need to educate our, our younger generations that the extra use of chemical, the exposure to pollutants, the use of so many uh, frozen foods and use of so many chemicals, cosmetics is something which is giving rise to a fall in. So AMH is also a hormone. And when our ovary gets exposed to toxic materials or toxins coming from outside, these degenerate and the AMH falls. So that is why we are seeing the fall in AMH level like an epidemic. So there are so many preventive measures that can be done to not let the AMH level fall. But once the AMH level has fallen, there is nothing that we can do uh, to increase it. But what we can do is, and uh, I see many patients, they come with the reports of doing AMH repeatedly that, no, it was less before. Now we took this medicine and that medicine and now AMH level has increased. Uh, that is not how we go about this situation. Doing AMH repeatedly is not going to help. Once we found out that the AMH level is uh, low, we can plan a pregnancy early or we can uh, go to an IVF consultant and look at our prognosis of pregnancy with IVF or just hasten the process of childbirth. So AMH level cannot be increased by any drug. There are some medicines like DHEA which are taken over the counter which uh, kind of it is promoted that you know this drug is going to increase your AMH level or it is going to increase the egg quality all these things are just empirical there is uh, it's not proven yet and these things are just that once a patient has low AMH level she does not want to go ahead and use a donor or she does not want to go ahead and do an IVF then the, some of the drugs are there which are given as empirical medicine to the patients to just mellow down their psychologically less depressed or these are just empirical medicines. Uh, so one has to understand that once the MH has fallen, if we don't hasten the process of childbirth, we might lose the window of opportunity and might have to use a donor. Now coming to the donor. So donor egg is not our first choice. We never tell patients that, you know, go ahead and do use a donor or it is not a first choice that needs to be done. But it's a boon. Uh, on the other hand, if the MH level is low and the lady is young, and there is no other way by which he can. So if at least there is somebody who can donate the egg and one can still have a child. However, by using a donor, the DNA will not match with the patient. So having a low AMH is a very unfortunate thing if it happens in the uh, young age. Uh, if it happens in advanced age, like people get married at 39, 40 and they have a low AMH level, then also, you know, it's an unfortunate thing to happen. And then... To, in order to save oneself, if we are deliberately delaying our pregnancy, one can freeze eggs. So one at a younger age, we can freeze our eggs of a lower age. And then once we marry, we can use those eggs of younger age. So these are the things that can help in prevention, but there's no cure. So finally, at the end of the video, I would like to say that AMH level is a blood test. It uh, should be done from a standardized lab. The values should be seen, the range in which it is uh, should be seen properly depending on the lab in which we are doing. Low AMH levels, uh, level patient need to really see an IVF consultant and to see what are their chances of pregnancy. They need to hasten the process of uh, childbearing. And then finally, the preventive measures that we need to educate our younger children are that they should get married in time, they should have their first child in time, and they should avoid exposure to pollutants and toxins in order to save their AMH or in order to protect their falling AMH levels. 
So finally, if you have any questions, you can put the questions in the comment section. I will try to answer the questions. And thank you very much for patient here.